Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland. This is a Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And it is, indeed, number 51 in this series of uh, extremely boring videos and mp3s. You can uh, download them for free in video format as an, and also as mp3s on my website. So it's all free. So you can have the video to keep as well. And uh, so I've got a few people. I've got someone just come on here just now and said something, but I couldn't see. I'm hoping that the sound is okay. Sound is a, maybe I'll move this sound a little bit closer to me. Sound should be it's quite close to my mouth. I've actually got myself uh, a new clip-on super duper, well hopefully it's a super duper microphone specifically for the iPhone. However, it's come with a normal plug-in socket. So I'm going to have to get an adapter because it doesn't fit into the lightning socket of the iPhone that I've got. So, I've had the iPhone for just over a year, so it's, it's iPhone 7, I think. So there, there you go. Um, only watch this or listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And what I was going to do, I'm not, not going to do it on this video, but... I'm going to try and see whether or not I can embed the live sessions onto my website. So you can just, I can just say, instead of going to my YouTube channel or going to the Facebook channel, just go to my website and you can watch the live session. And if I'm able to do that, and if it works okay, I might start doing some more regular live broadcasts maybe relaxation sessions, perhaps twice a week, something like that. So I haven't got me goggles on today, as you can see. Um, there's not any reason for that, really. I can, I can see sort of that kind of distance. I can see general in front of me. But... If the television was on, which it isn't, it would be blurry, which is a sh it's a shame because my eyesight never used to be like that. But then everything changes, doesn't it? So, so I'm not going to wait for lots of people to come on here because. Pretty much wherever you start listening, the level of boredom is pretty much the same. And the, the stories I tell aren't necessarily going to need continuous uh, following, as it were. Stories, will I tell a, I might tell a story. I might do, I might not. So before I start, please like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already so that you can be notified of new videos. I try and do a new video every day. Sometimes I manage to, sometimes I don't do any videos at all. But my aim is to try and do 
at least one thing a day, whether it's let me bore you to sleep, whether it's a daily hypnosis. And I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping to build up to a point where I'm doing the daily hypnosis session every day. So I don't necessarily intend to do a let me bore you to sleep every day, but I think every, other, every couple of days is quite good. You know, there's only so much time in the day. And um, I might have mentioned this in the past, that it's, it's not just the recording that takes the time up, it's the uploading. So it, sometimes it takes, the other day it took five hours to upload an hour-long video. Sometimes it takes an hour. So it just depends upon the internet speed at that time. Um, so in that period of time that I'm uploading, I can't make any other videos because the, iPhone, the phone is being used. If that makes sense. But I'm going to look into uh, maybe, 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 getting the camera out so I've got a camera, a video camera and maybe trying to start making maybe some uh, there will have to be shorter videos I think half an hour or 29 minutes is the cut off for those so uh, so just had a I'm getting a couple of messages, so I'm just going to wave in response to the messages that I've got. And so thank you for that. Um, but I won't say what's been said. You can read the comments anyway, because comments will be in the video as it's being, as I'm doing it live. And also, I'm not sure, but I think the comments will be there at the end as well. So you can sort of read what's been said. But I won't actually verbally respond because... I'll probably have my eyes closed a lot of the time and I'll just be yabbering on about stuff. But it's not that I'm ignoring messages, I'm just... Well, I suppose, I'm, I suppose it is ignoring them, but not, not in a kind of a rude way. So if, if I see a message, I'll just say hi. Um, I suppose to let you know there's a new thing that me and... Fiona, or well, Fiona's doing it, uh, and it's going to be a Facebook page for those people that watch my videos and that like what I do, a place to go for some, maybe some like emotional support, and somewhere where you can talk and maybe make posts, but it'll be set as private, so that only people that want to join can apply and so the outside world can't like read what's been said so it's just a so it'll only be people that are I guess known to me or known to Fiona regarding people that watch the videos whether it's on you know whether you watch me on Facebook um, or on YouTube or on my website where whatever so So I'm just, uh, that's, that's it really. But I'll tell you more as it occurs. So please remember, if you do like what I'm doing, just to say that you visited, maybe click the like button. Um, I like to collect as many likes as possible. It uh, gives me a like, warm, fuzzy, <laughs> a warm, fuzzy feeling inside. Makes you feel all cozy like a little like a little ferret in a stinky bag where did I get the idea of a, a ferret in a stinky bag from oh Andre he's got this bag I can't get it because it's over there and it means getting out of the chair but he it is so stinky it's the smelliest little bag ever inside he doesn't smell like that but when he gets out of it he does a bit, 
and it's just he loves the worse the smell is the more he loves it he's, he's just attracted to really really bad smells and I don't know why, I don't know why so today I had a delivery oh well, I went to bed quite early hours in the morning, probably about six o'clock this morning. And yesterday I was up, I was in bed most of the day. So I was woken up at about 10 to nine this morning with a delivery from Amazon. And it was my microphone, the one that doesn't work. Well, it works, but I can't use it yet. And, um, so Soren says, could I do a Halloween special, Jason Chats? I thought about doing a Halloween Jason Chats special. Actually, I was thinking, should I get, should I get all made up? <laughs> That'd be weird. But uh, maybe, I don't know when Halloween is. It's in a few days' time. So I... Oh, I've got to stop answering, otherwise I lose my track of thought. And uh, with these, let me bore you to sleep. It's just a, me just talking. So uh, the whole yeah, ten to nine this morning, I got a delivery, and It was the, the microphone for the iPhone. I couldn't believe how early it was. And I just thought, oh, I've been asleep maybe less than three hours. And I went back to bed. And I got woken up again about 11 by Amazon again. But this time it was my laptop being delivered. So I put, you know, got the laptop and put it on the table and left it. I went back to bed again. But I wanted to be up in time to watch the budget, because it was the, the budget on telly today, or on telly, it was a budget in the House of Commons, but uh, I always watch the budget if I'm able to do that, if I'm, um, you know, if I'm not working or whatever. And the first thing that they said, the first thing that um, Philip Hammond, the Chancellor, says was, this budget is for hard-working families. So straight away, it is alienating pretty much anyone that's ill. Straight away. And it's just, oh, oh, that's nice. So this, how about this budget's aimed for everybody? Ah, well. So, I think Andre's looking for his dinner. I didn't want to wake him up, he was asleep. And I thought, should I give him his dinner? before I do the video, or should I give him his dinner after I've done the video? I can't give him his dinner during the video because it's not a Jason Chats, I can't really just get up and do what I want. This is more, very much more disciplined, very much more, I'm very much more professional when I do these. And uh, on my SoundCloud account, is being reinstated. My previous one that was deleted. But I don't know if it's going to have all the tracks on it or it's just going to be. But I just don't know. So I've got to wait. I should know by tomorrow. If it is, if it's got all the tracks back, then all the links and all the uh, embeds. Andre's playing with the wrapping from the laptop. All the 
MP3s are embedded into my website. And that's quite a few days of work to do that. So it'd be nice to not have to delete all of those, you know? I'm hoping that Andre will be quiet in a minute. I think basically he's woken up and he's got lots of energy. He's absolutely loving a little bit of plastic. It's like a little plastic bag that the plug came in. And he's getting excited about it. I'd love to know what's going on inside his mind sometimes. Only sometimes. I think when he's sniffing at the drain when I take him for a walk and he's sniffing, trying to get his head down the drain, I don't think I want to know what he's thinking at that point. That worries me a little bit. I don't think I'd want to know the the, mo the motivation behind that. No. So for those that haven't watched these videos before or listened to these MP3s before, this is just me talking and talking and talking and talking. And there's no necessary, there's not really a, uh, necessary isn't a real word, but it's not necessarily any um, reason to what I'm saying other than just to be boring. And I discovered years ago that actually the things that I enjoy talking about the things that interest me don't seem to interest other people and they find it boring. So it's a skill. It's my, my superpower to be boring and for some people it would be, I guess, a difficult thing, you know, for some people to be really boring would be a, uh, I guess it could feel like a disability to some people, but for me, I'm using that. I'm using that power for good to help people to sleep. In the past, I've been nicknamed the Sandman. Didn't know what it meant. But then Adam Sandler calls himself the Sandman. Andre's looking for his dinner. It's really weird. I never, I never hide his food. And he's now looking for it. And it's always in the same place. And whenever I give him his dinner, even if he's asleep, I wake him up. And I say, Andre, din din. And I'll give him his dinner and he'll sniff it and lick it and then, then he'll get out of his bag or wherever he's sleeping and he'll, he'll walk around the side of the cage and I'll, you know, I'll put it onto the floor and he can eat it there. It's always in the same place, always. But when he's hungry, he starts looking. He's running around the flat looking in the kitchen, looking inside the cage. in the bathroom. It's like, why would I suddenly start putting it in the bathroom? I said that to him and he said, well, I don't know. I said, well, it doesn't make sense, does it, Andre? 
why would I start putting your bowl after three and a half years or three years and whatever months it's been since you know we've lived together why would I start putting your food in a completely different place and he said well why are you picking on me so I'm not picking on you I'm just asking just uh, what he said look I'm a ferret what do you expect you, you, you after some kind of philosophical conversation I said no he said uh, I'm these are my basic urges. I'm hungry, therefore I want to eat. And I will look for the food. It's in my nature to hunt and to look for food. And Yeah, but you don't have to do that. You can't. I don't think he could, I don't think he'd do very well in the wild. If he did, if he left home, he would have to take a tin opener with him. And um, he'd have to take a tin opener so he could open his tins. And then how would he carry all the tins? Imagine if he actually did catch a rabbit. And he'd have his tin opener and say, well, where do I open it? It's like, no, it's not a can. So yeah, Andre's, uh, you know his tail, I, I was a bit worried, well, I was not that worried, I mean, I wasn't like, you know, sitting up at night thinking about it, but his tail was getting a bit bare, I think that's the only word. It was just, this just seemed, for some reason there was less hair on his tail and the rest of him was furry you know it's covered in hair the rest of him was like lovely and there was just this little bit at the end of his tail that looked like a it was a bit of a nub a bit of a nub it was a it was yeah it's like a great like a grim a gremlin's gremlin's nipple it was that kind of, and I didn't know why. Why was there no hair on it? But now it's full of hair, and it just seemed to happen really quickly. Since the, the season started to change, you know, a few weeks ago, when it stopped, you know, it started becoming autumn, and he did say, oh, I feel very autumnal, Daddy. Very, very autumnal. And I said, wow, I can't, didn't know you could talk. He said, I can't really. I said, well, why, why, are, you, why are you talking then if you can't? He said, well, you've done 50 of these recordings already. You've got to start making some stuff up because there's only so much of your boring life that you can talk about. You know, you'd... You haven't been alive long enough to... And you think you've got one hour for each year of your life, pretty much, that you've talked. And one year of your life does not take a, a, an hour to talk about. I said, that that is rude. He said, well, why is it rude? I said, well, I do do stuff, you know. And he said, well, like what? I said, I do stuff, I go out. He said, when did you go out? I said, what do you mean, when did I go out? I've been out lots of times. I go to the shop, I went to the garage today. He said, oh, you went to the garage? What, all by yourself? I said, oi, there's no need for that. Anyway, what do you mean all by myself? I'm 48, I can go to places on my own. He said, yeah, but you normally take me with you because I make you feel safe and, and confident. Yeah, well, 
I don't know where you get that idea that I, I can't, well, I didn't really know what to say to him, to be fair. So, well, because the fact is that when I've got him with me, I'll talk to people. So, I'm not really, it might be because I lived in London for a long time, but I, I'm, you know, I'm not really a hello, sort of waving to people as I walk down the street. I've not really done that um, for a long time. Not really, never really did it. But with when I've got Andre, people smile, and sometimes they come over and talk to, but well, talk to him, and uh, they say things like, "Oh." How old is he? I was like, and he says, "Oh, he's about seventy, I think." And I said, "Wait, no, why are you talking to the fair? Talk to me. If he can't even talk." I'd say, "Well, he just did, didn't he? He said you were seventy. I said, but how can you even understand that?" It's, I said, "Well, I used to be a, I'm a half ferret." I thought, "What do you mean you're half ferret?" Yeah, well, my mother was. Um, had an interesting and exciting uh, love life. And I thought, oh, that's more than I needed to know. And Andre giggled. Andre does that quite a bit. He finds weird stuff funny. He, he has these different ways of getting back at me. So if I tell him off, or probably the worst thing in the world I can do with him is give him a bath. Doesn't like baths. He's got this real thing about baths. Never liked them. But I know another ferret who's absolutely fine with baths. But he, he just really has an issue with it. So and I, only, I only give him a bath every couple of months or maybe one once a month, a couple of months. But I try and take him out when it's raining so he gets a bit of water. But he doesn't, you know, he's got a natural cleaning coat with oil in it and everything. So it's, and he's very clean. He's a very clean boy. Um, I know he's, uh, his bum's clean because he keeps wiping it on the carpet. He giggles then as well. So as, as I speak, he's actually inside my cupboard in the bedroom. I can hear him scratching it, trying to get out. So he's scratched to get in, so he's gone going like that to get into the cupboard. And he's basically he's lying on his back with his head near the, the door, and he keeps scratching it until it opens and then he puts his head and he pushes pushes the door wide open well wide enough and he climbs in and the door closes behind him and then he just starts banging it banging the door and scratching at the door and when he first started doing it you know a couple of years ago I used to get worried and I'd go in there and I'd stop whatever I was doing, I'd pause the television program if I was able to pause it, depending whether I, I mean, it depends what I'm watching. If I'm watching Now TV, I can pause it. I didn't realise until the other day that you can actually pause the Now TV if you watch the the live channels like Sky or um, Gold, Gold is another channel. Do they have, do they have the Geographic channel? I think they do have the Ge Geographic channel on there. And I'm not sure what other channels they have. But when you're watching the live TV or Now TV, the let's say Sky One, or gold, I quite like gold. 
is they they play the old TV shows that I used to like watching. And, you know, especially, they very much like to play the Only Fools and Horses, which is uh, one of my favourite programmes. And usually around Christmas time, maybe even on Christmas Day, I watch Only Fools and Horses, and I'll just watch them back to back. Isn't that a strange term, back to back? The only time I've ever been back to back with someone is when I've been measuring my arm with with them. So we're trying to touch their their tips of their not toes, their fingers, just to see what the length of the arms are, of my arms compared to theirs. I suppose a duel as well would be another one you'd start with your back to the person. I can't think of any other reason to have your back towards somebody, your back against their back. I'm trying to think. I suppose those of you are stuck, you like. It was glue or something, super glue. And you both happened to had super glue on your back and didn't realise that each other had that and maybe we're going into the lift at the same time and the doors were closing and you kind of backed against each other. Or maybe you're on a tube, you know, a train or underground and it was very, you know, everyone's sort of squashed together. I suppose you're back to back there as well, aren't you? Sometimes. Or front to front. Or side to side, I suppose. Unless, of course, you're sitting down and then you're head to groin. Because you're kind of, your head level is where they're wherever bits are, wherever, wherever, where, yeah. I used to, I used to travel on a tube, like, re very regularly, every day for years, and I always used to stand up, unless, of course, I sat down, then I'd, then I'd sit down, but I like to, um, so if you get on a tube, that not everyone perhaps has been on a tube yet, um, perhaps if you're living in uh, a place that you, that doesn't have tubes, because I know it's isn't it called the metro in in uh, France, and in America it's called the not the Broadway. Uh, it's not the underground, although that's what the underground, that's what the tube is here, it's the underground. Underground trains. That's gone out of my head. Underground America, it's not Metro, is it? It's the... But as far as I'm aware, England was the first country to have underground trains. But then I suppose, unless you class the mines, because they used to have trains on railway track going through the mines, and there's been mines all over the world, isn't there? I don't know where the first mine was. Got to be somewhere. It's hard to know, isn't it? And sometimes it just seems like, oh, obvious. Oh, that's, yeah, it was in Malibu or Hong Kong or Australia. That's where the first 
first train going underground was. But I think the, the first actual passenger trains underground was, was I thinking boardwalk? Underground? Yeah, just still trying to think of the American underground trains in America. So when I used to get on, so I get onto the underground, I used to use the central line quite a lot because uh, I lived in Stratford. Not all the time, but you know, I'd get on at Stratford. Sometimes I'd get on at, my, not Mile End, uh, Maryland Station. Uh, and depends where I was. Other times I might get on at Leighton or Leightonstone or Forest Gate or Upton Park. So I used to, you know, it depended where I was going and what, you know, where I lived at the time. Because, for example, if I lived in Forest Gate, I'd go to the Forest Gate train station. I wouldn't walk all the way down Forest Lane to Maryland Station, or even further down to Stratford. Because that would be, there wouldn't be much point in that. But then it depends really where I was going because you know, sometimes it's nice to go for a walk. If it's a nice day, sometimes it's nice, you know, especially if it's the central line that I'm wanting anyway. But when I lived uh, near Upton Park in East Ham, I used to get the, used to, you know, Upton Park used to be it was Green Street is the road. There's actually a film named after it. And I used to walk and there used to be a kebab shop on the corner. And then across the road from the kebab shop, there was, I think like an off license. And the, the road was very much full of clothes shops on one side, on one end. And then as you moved more, just past the pub on the left, there was some supermarkets. I think Iceland, maybe a Tesco. Uh, there's a few supermarkets. Everything, everything I needed was there. And then as you move further down, there is a big market. So I think it was, I don't know if they called it Upton Park Market or... Uh, East Ham Market. But then if you keep going, there's a, like a hill, it's not a big hill, but if you go up, and then when you get to the top of the hill, you could see that that's where the train station was. But you could see down, and further down the hill, on the left, there was Upton Park Football Stadium, where West Ham played. That's where they, that's their foot, that was their football team, like ground. They now uh, play at the Stratford Stadium, the Olympic Stadium that was built for the Olympics in 2012. I'm not sure why they moved. But sometimes on a, a match day, let's say a Saturday, I'll be going, getting ready to go to work, because I used to work nights. And I'll be traveling, and I'd get, and I'd be walking up that hill, and I could hear, I could hear people. I'd look down as I got to the top of the hill, and see thousands and thousands of people all walking <laughs> towards the train station. So I'd try and get on a train just before they got, got on there. Otherwise, 
everything got delayed and I'd end up maybe having to stand and, you know. I do remember though, because you could walk down past the, because sometimes our electricity would run out or and you'd have to wait until six o'clock or six thirty or seven to be able to go and get some credit off the news agents. So we'd walk down the road on the way towards the Upton Park station. Andre's really being a little bit You're being a bit n naughty, Andre. So yeah, you could walk down, and that's the his biggest news agents would, that I'd go into. Sometimes I'd buy a chocolate bar. Not always. I can't remember what I used to buy. Maybe like a Mars bar. Oh, at that time I was really into these. I forget what they were called, but they were. They were new. There were these new chocolate bars. I think they were from. Uh, they weren't new in the world, but they were new in. And they weren't specifically from where I lived, my area, because generally uh, confectionery isn't marketed to a specific set of roads. You know, it's usually for the whole country. So I forget what it was called, but. Reasons, that's it, Reasons. I think it's spelled R-E-I-S-O-N-S. -S. Oh, really, and they were like toffee, but chocolate, and they were lovely. And the adverts were just really silly. I think they were kind of like maybe Scandinavian adverts, and they were dubbed. You know, the voice was dubbed over it, and it was, they were just, just, just really silly didn't really make a lot of sense but they tasted nice and I think I bought some reasons on a in a morning when I was getting the electricity I was about how old was I then 26 yeah, I was 26-ish. And so it's 22 years ago. So I'm not, my memory's not going to be perfect for those things. Didn't even think about it until I started talking about it. And I'd go in and I'd get the electricity, electricity, if I can say the word, and then I'd get a packet of reasons. But it was too early in the morning. Just, I didn't really... I've never been an early morning chocolate eater. Early morning chocolate eater. That's a, that's a bunch of words, isn't it? I never really... I like breakfast in the morning. I'm not really even... Um, too excited by cooked food first thing in the morning. When I did, when I stay in a hotel, like most hotels, there's usually a. Not that I stay in hotels very often. It's usually more like a holiday inn or something like that. But when I do, there's usually a breakfast, like a cooked breakfast available some they'll bring the cooked breakfast to you um, and it'll maybe be part of your stay so if you stay overnight which I suppose most people do with hotels you can't book them by the hour not no actually my brother it's totally true no, it's totally true my brother came up to London and he had nowhere to stay and he 
basically he was looking for st to stay in London. And I put him up for a couple of days, but he farted too much. I just had to get him out. No, he didn't. But, you know, it wasn't my home to, to let him stay in. But he was, you know, I managed to put him up for a couple of days. And then we started looking for somewhere for him to stay in. So like a bed and breakfast or, you know, something like that. And knocked on a few doors and they said, oh, we're full, we're full. Um, but there was some that had signs that said no vacancies um, in the front window. So these quite big houses. And I remember it was in... We were walking down, I think it was uh, Romford Road, and it's basically a road that turns off from Stratford, and it's, it's a long, 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 long road. I guess it leads to Romford, and it's very busy all the time, always traffic, 24 hours a day, and it's a very busy area, or where it used to be, I don't know now, it might, there might only be three people living there now, but unlikely. I don't remember ever seeing an ice cream truck there. That's not really part of the story. So, we sent to, um, We went to different bed and breakfasts and I found a place that had a vacancy sign in the window. And if I recall, facing the house, the steps were going up. Um, I suppose there's only one way they can, well they can go down as well can't they? But it's either up or down, but usually I think to go up to a door, the steps have to go upwards. But I think it was a few, st not a lot of steps, maybe about one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, maybe seven or eight steps going up. And then I think there was a, like a little flat surface and then a couple of more steps, like one, two, and then it was a, I'm, sh I'm not sure what, color the door was. I have a feeling it might be in blue, like dark blue, or it might be in yellow. It was definitely a dark color, so it might be, or it could be red, or white. No, I don't think it was white, but it might be bright yellow. I'm not sure if there was a letterbox in the door, but there usually is. But then some places I don't have a letterbox in the actual door, but there's a letterbox at the side of the door, you know, built into the brickwork, or, you know, to the side of, you know, so it's not actually in the door itself, so the whole of the door has no holes. But it's not totally true. It's, if it's got a lock on it, it has to have a hole. Locks don't work without holes. In you know to put the key in. I was going to say it's like you can't make a cup of tea without a kettle. But of course you can boil water in. In a small saucepan or you can 
boil the water in a, a medium sized saucepan or maybe in a even a large saucepan I suppose but it depends how many people are wanting to drink, you know have a cup of tea I never made a cup of tea that I remember using a teapot you know putting in the the loose tea and then adding the hot water and then put in a tea cozy over the top and letting the tea brew because my nan used to do that and she made the lovely cup of tea and she used to do that she'd um, she'd boil the water I think she used to use a kettle but then I imagine at one point she would have used they used to have these kettles that you could put on the gas so you'd cook you know, you you put it onto the the hob of the cooker, whether it's electric or gas, and the water would be in it, and it'd be like a whistly kettle. And when it was spoiled, it'd start whistling, and that's when you'd know it was done. So I don't know if it was specifically designed for people that were busy, and they might have needed to go out somewhere else, and not out of the house, but maybe into a different room. Because where my nan lived, so the kettle would be on the side. Now I'm trying to remember, was the cooker on the left or the right side of the sink? I think it might be on the right side or the left left side maybe I can't remember unless it was on the other wall could it be on the other side completely I'm pretty sure it's close to the sink but I know that if I was visiting then I think my nan would go and say I'll get, make a cup of tea um, and she'll go and she'll make a cup of tea but then she'd come back in and I'd be waiting thinking oh boy, where's she'd say how are, you, how are you getting on grandson and I said why, why don't you normally just call me Jason she said well I thought I'd make this story a little bit more interesting and I said okay I said uh I'd like to tell you how I'm getting on, but she said, well, what, what's, what's going on? I said, I'm just not, it's just the way I'm feeling, it's, you know. She said, well, if you're not feeling great, you can talk to me, tell me, talk about anything. I said, well, I was feeling all right until I got here. I said, well, why, what's happened? I said, well, you said you were making a cup of tea, but you come back in empty-handed. Where's my tea? And where's the biscuits? And she said, oh, okay, oh, well, I do have biscuits, but is that really what's on your mind? I said, not really. She said, why did you say, why, why did you mention it then? I said, well, just like you, I wanted to embellish and brighten up the story. She, she laughed. She did a little dance and then she she went back into the kitchen. But just before she did the dance, you could hear the the whistle of the kettle. So she... I think... I don't know, I think it was a tune. I think it's... My name was very, very creative and I think that the sound of the whistle of the... Of the the kettle being boiled, it was 
a mixture of um, excitement for the for the tea that was going to be coming, but also there was a jolly tune from the whistle as well. We got my nan tap dancing. So then she went into the kitchen. I'm guessing she went to the kitchen because I always see the living room. But I don't really see her having gone anywhere else. Because uh, she came back in and she had the teapot on like a, a tray. The teapot had a tea cosy over it. And there was two cups on uh, saucers, not flying saucers, but saucers, not UFOs, but saucers, where I think the point is it, it, it captures any uh, residue, any spill, any spillage. So that, I think that's what the, I'm guessing that that's what the origination of the sources was. But it might also be a mixture of, it's, some, it's a way to hold it. So you could hold the saucer with your fingers or your hands. The fingers are part of the hands, aren't they? So with your hands, which is what I used to do. Sometimes what I do is I pick it up pick the, the sauce up with my left hand, but I'd also kind of hold the cup with my right hand, uh, holding the, the handle. So it's not that it was heavy, but you know, I had to be able to, to lift the cup and drink out of it. But once you spill some tea into the saucer, you need to have the saucer underneath the cup at all times, otherwise it drips all over you. And I didn't want to burn my cleavage. So I just you know, kept it underneath my chin. And it was really nice because uh, what my nan did is she'd already have the tea with the tea bag, with not the, the tea leaves in and she'd have a, a tea strainer. So she put that and it had these little hooks. So it'd rest on top of the cup, but these two little hooks on, uh, I think it was metal, or it might've been plastic, with a, a mesh. Uh, it's kind of like a, like a fishing net, but a lot smaller and for tea specifically for tea leaves rather than a fish. And she'd pour the, she might stir it first. I think she used to stir it first, like start open up because the teapot, depending on which one she had, because I think she had a few. So this particular one, I think it was like china or ceramic or polystyrene, I don't know, but she'd lift the lid up, but you had to turn the lid to lift it up. There was, so you couldn't just pull it off. You had to turn it first and then lift it up. And then she'd get a spoon, but she didn't have, she didn't use the little spoons, the, the little teaspoons that we had. She actually had a, a larger spoon, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a dessert spoon. It was, um, a long spoon, but not the same kind of spoon that you have with a Knickerbocker Glory ice cream. Not though that kind of long, maybe that length, but the actual, the spoony bit at the end was a bit bigger. It's a bit like a normal spoon. And she'd stir the inside of the teapot and you could hear it like not a rattle I don't know what the right word would be but tinkle 
tinkle, tinkle, tinkle like that. And then she'd put the lid back on. But because she's she'd been making cups of tea for so long, or pots of tea, she knew just the right way to put the lid back on. And it look, made it look so easy. And then she put the tea cosy back on the teapot. And I said to her, oh, are we not gonna, we're not gonna have any tea then? And she said, oh, it's always good to let it to, to brew. I'd like to let it brew. I said, okay. She said, yeah, it's good to brew. That's why in some parts of the country, they call it a brew. Like where we lived, we called it tea. But other parts, some other parts of the country call tea a brew because that's what it is. And they call their cars broom brooms because they go broom broom. And they call their toilets flush flush. So, you know, it depends where you, where you come from. And what she was always generous. My 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 nan was always about helping other people, putting other people first, always. And she poured my tea first, and then she poured her own tea. And there was a. Uh, like a little, like a little mug, but it was like quite little, that had milk in it. And then she had a bowl that had sugar lumps as well. I remember her saying once, because I used to like just eating the sugar lumps on their own. She used to say, oh, you should have been born a horse. And I remember saying to her, what do you mean? Should have been born a horse. I'm a human. Why would you want me to be a horse? You got a bicycle, or would you want to ride me around? She said, no, it's just because you're eating sugar lumps and horses like sugar lumps. I said, what? So a horse's natural diet is sugar lumps. That's what they eat in the wild, is it? Where they go and search for the sugar lump tree. And she said, what are, you, what are you talking about? I said, what are you talking about? And then we had some tea. And I put some milk in. Never used to put a lot of milk in. I think it's kind of, you can never undo the amount of milk that you put in, but you can always put more. So I used to just put maybe a little bit less in that I needed. And then other times I might put the right amount in and there are other times, there's also times when I put maybe a bit too much. So I go into the kitchen, pour it out, and then try and even out the colour by putting more tea out of the teapot in there. But then quite often I would forget about the tea strainer. And I'd end up with a mouthful of tea leaves. Which is annoying because I've always had a I've always had a very uh I don't know what the right word is, but eclectic tongue. My tongue has always been very interested in the occult and things like telling the future and that was a bit annoying because I 
be drinking my tea and the tea leaves are going in my tongue and I'll be trying to spit it out but my tongue will be trying to tell me you know what's going to happen in the next week so I don't want to know just I just want to spit it out and my tongue will be going yeah but you know do you realize that maybe you're going to have five children and there's all these things and it's, you're going to live a long life and one day you're going to have a you go on a hot air balloon ride and like what's that got to do with hot air balloon ride I'm never going to do that it's not going to happen it's like yeah but it might and uh, did you if you you know stop listening after a while then I had a biscuit I used to like biscuits that used to be my favourite thing about drinking tea is the biscuits the Dunkin biscuits and Dunkin donuts I don't think we have it in this country we might have but I've never seen one but can you actually dunk the donuts in the tea or coffee or is that just the name of the place Yeah, I used to have my tea, I used to like it. I'm more of a coffee person now though. I really drink tea. I have one cup of coffee a day and that's when I get up out of bed. Not always straight away when I get out of bed. I mean I usually go to the toilet first. Sometimes I put a yawn, that's probably the first thing I do. I have a stretch. I like I like a good stretch. Like with my arms, you know. Sometimes I, to save time, I combine the stretch and the yawn. So both do them both at the same time. You know, release any unwanted wind. You know, just basically just free myself up a bit. Then I go in the bathroom. I put my slippers on first, although they're not really slippers, they're more like clogs, plastic, um, croc crocs are they called? And that's just because Andre will eat the slippers if I buy slippers. So I had to, I had to get these because he can't, because these are like hard rubber, he, he gives up on them. But yeah, I'll have a cup of coffee in the morning with my breakfast. And usually that's the only time that I drink coffee. I used to drink coffee a lot, but not really anymore. I quite like dipping digestive biscuits into coffee even ginger nuts ginger nuts are quite nice the only problem with that is the ginger nuts taste nice with coffee soaked into them but the coffee doesn't taste quite as good with the ginger which I never quite worked out it's, you'd think it would be the same the same mixture wouldn't you but it doesn't seem to be. So I suppose I should bring this to an end because the hour is fairly up, I think. I can't quite see, I haven't got my glasses on, but it's about an hour, maybe a bit longer, an hour and 10 minutes that I've been uh, talking. So take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you next time. Bye. On a go. I've got to press the buff the off button.